Hi everybody, good day to you. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whichever one of those applies at this current point in time. This is a 2007 Pontiac GXP with a 5.3 liter V8. That's right, back in the day they used to do V8s in a front wheel drive configuration. Kind of cool, kind of not, but mostly just cool. This is the second video I made in this car. On the first video I changed this uh, very hard to replace power steering line and I also replaced the power steering pump for that big giant fluid leak that this thing has. So now that's all buttoned up. What we're gonna do next is pull this intake manifold off because right here and right here and in between the two, there is a coolant uh, steam pipe crossover passage that connects uh, the coolant passages on this cylinder head to that cylinder head. And that pipe, which is metal at the base of it, has a little leak uh, where the nipple comes out for this hose right here. And it has since been repaired with JB Weld or something, but we're gonna go in there and replace it with a new unit. So uh, what we need to do is get all these uh, hoses and wires and things of that nature out of the way. Pull all that aside, we're gonna unbolt this intake, pop it off, and we're gonna come in from the back side of the engine here, and we're gonna pull that pipe out and replace it. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a really good video. Oh, and by the way, if you missed the first video or didn't get to finish it, or would just like to go back and rewatch it, I will put a link down in this video's description that will take you back in time to the first video. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is just go in here and pick away at all the small stuff that needs to be removed in order to gain a little bit of space. We've got some uh, PCV stuff, some uh, EVAP purge valve connections, etc., etc. We're gonna get all this stuff out of here. Insert foot and mouth. I cannot unconnect the connector. There we go. All right, you can, uh, well, you just go back over there. You stay out of the way. Let's pull that guy off. That's disconnected. Oh, here we go. There's another connector. Let's get rid of that. Come here. What is this? Defeated by a map sensor. What are you glued on? There. I used to play a little game with myself. <laughs> that came out wrong. On these older GMs, I always like to see how far I could get into the engines with just a pocket screwdriver and a 10 millimeter. I'm gonna try that again today. Here, we need to generate space for this wiring harness, so I'm gonna just get everything unplugged. This is actually a really tight squeeze. Well, it's a V8 inside of a V6 sized engine compartment, so everything's gonna be super tight. Come off there. See, you gotta tell it what to do. If you don't give it instructions, it won't listen. It's just the way that it goes. Okay, we'll move these over here some. This thing can come back over here. You stay right there, that's not gonna work. Oh, it's got a connector on it, it's a bunch of clips and whatnot. Let's get that thing disconnected. Again with the pocket screwdriver. Come off, connector, what are you doing? There it is. It's more like a, a mount than anything. I'll show you when I get it out of here. There, there it is. Now I can move that hose over there out of the way. This can stay right here for right now. Let's get all of our injectors disconnected. These are the easy ones that there we go. That one's tough, it doesn't want to come out. Four down, four to go. I don't think these connectors have been off of here in a while. They're they're on pretty good.
come off. I'm running low on patience. Because it's 3.30. And I always run out of patience at 3.30. Oh, didn't do it. The sound didn't make it work. Two more to go. I got two more. Flyers. Big one. I can't. I can't get a, a grip on anything. There. And there's another one. It's lingering. It's down there. I can see the green on it. Injectors are removed. I'm gonna pull this uh, ignition coil connector away. There it is. Put that over here. Same thing with this O2 sensor connector down here. I'll just disconnect that. Easier said than done. This is my life. Okay. Pocket screwdriver. I didn't take two. Come over here. All right. Let's see what do we got to do next. First things first. Is there coolant running through this throttle body? Because if there is, I'm going to take the throttle body off. And I don't think that there is. A big old vacuum tube. Take that off right now. Pew! That's how you know your brake booster is good. It held a vacuum. And the check ball held a vacuum. Or check valve. I should have said valve. Anyway, um, let's see. I got all the support equipment removed, I think. Except for this little connector right here. That's going to be fun. Unclick. That's a coolant temp sensor, I believe. All right, now, um, uh, well, I gotta break my 10 millimeter rule and bust out an eight. Time to pull the manifold bracket. Manifold bolts off. Okay, we're gonna need an eight mil. Uh, comment below if you know the movie reference. ESP and eight, the Ocho. Unclicks. I'm undecided if I should remove uh, the fuel line or just try to uh, take the manifold and you know throw it over to the side. I have not uh, reached a decision on that just yet. Uh, that's uh, uno mas. And that's a 10. There's a little bracket there. I'm gonna take a 10. Okay. Why? A buried wire to, or bolt down there. That's that's asinine. How am I supposed to get that out? Hmm, very carefully. Now I was hoping to leave this on because it required the use of something besides a 10 millimeter. But I need to move the wire. That is flipping tight. Who put that on there so tight? Who did that? Don't do that again. Live wire. Zzz. Electron overload. Okay, here, we'll, uh, we'll put these over here. 
I put the little cover back over that wire so it's safe and insulated from electrical arcing. Now I can get this, uh, is that a power steering hose? Yeah, that's another one. We're gonna try to leave that here. I'm just gonna go in with a ratcheting wrench and see if I cannot get that little bolt unclicked. Can you guys see? See what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah, I really don't feel like taking this bracket off the front of this engine, considering I just had the front of this engine apart slightly. And if I find out I've got to do it again, I'm going to be... Mm, oh, what's the word? Aggravated. There we go. I'll be slightly aggravated. Or I could just drill a hole through it. I realize I won't be able to pull this bolt all the way out because they're about, you know, yay long or so. But if I can just get it to unthread and then hang out in the manifold, I can just slip it out that way and it'll be good. All right, it's free. It has achieved freedom. So I think the only thing holding this manifold in is nothing. Uh, real quick, I'm gonna blast all this with some air to remove any dirt that might be near the intake runners because I do not want that dirt to go into the intake. That'd be bad. So let's bust out the assault blow gun. That should be fine. Hey, listen, so here's the deal. This is a sacrificial prop slash tool. And the reason it's sacrificial is every time I use it, uh, I lose followers because they think that I'm working on cars with assault rifles. Um, seriously, it's just a blow gun with a red dot. I didn't think you can see the dot. Oh, there it is. It's a green dot today. See the green? Yeah, anyway. So I got, I got a foregrip and, a, and an AK sight with a crappy Chinese red slash green dot sight. And I'm just gonna use this little guy to clean out all this debris. But as I was saying, every time I use this, it's sacrificial because uh, people see it and they become afraid and they think that it's an assault weapon and then they unsubscribe. So uh, I need you to help me combat that. Here we go. Cleaning time. Bye, yeah, see, that's just way too much fun. It's also great for the floor. Goodbye, leaves. Okay, I have made the decision that this fuel line has to come off because this manifold has to come up and then this way to clear that little lip under the bracket. And it's, I don't think it's gonna happen with this uh, fuel line here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and detach this thing uh, right now. Special tools required. Better than this, I think I have the wrong one. Yeah, here, let's try this one. That one doesn't work very well. It's plasticky. Got it. It does work very well. See, I challenged its ego by doubting it. All right, let us see if my assumption is going to play out the way that I thought it was. It's either going to work or it's not. We're sorry. You have to drop the subframe again. Woo. Oh, no way, dude. Don't tell me that's not going to come out. Um, you are going to come out of there. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm just, I'm not taking that bracket off. I swear if the labor guide screwed me over, I will not be a happy camper. Let's pick the bolt up. Because it might be catching the, the threads in the intake, the lower intake. Ah, here we go. It's coming out. Hi, Vin. You lose. Come on, dude. What is this? It's like everything I do just works halfway and then it stops working again. Come out, there we go. That goes over there, out of the way. Come on, intake. Did you hear what I said? There we go. Oh, 
Okay, it's out. Now we can see the part that uh, we were looking for that's got the leak. Okay, let's see. Yeah, yeah, here's, here's our pipe. It's this little metal guy right here. It runs between the two cylinder heads. And the leak is occurring, I'm assuming right in here. Looks like a lot of JB Weld and stuff. But uh, that's going away because we got a new one. Yeah, we can see here there's plenty of uh, additional debris that I was not able to get out of there when I, when I blew everything out. So uh, we're gonna clean that out before we uh, put all this back together. There's no way I can put that intake back in with that stuff there because I'll just slide across it and then brush it into the runners and that'll just not be good. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and plug all these holes and I can vacuum this out and then we can blow it off. Then I can take that uh, pipe off and replace it with the new unit. Got the shop back here. Let's go ahead and fire it up and clean out all these crusties and we'll wipe it down and uh, pull that uh, steam pipe out. Powering on. Nasty. Give this a quick spray down. We'll wipe it clean. And uh, we'll head over and change that pipe out. Look at that, nice and shiny. There we go, beautiful, look at that. That's what we like. bit more. high pressure like a pressure washer nice oh yeah brake clean pressure washer the Futurama looking coolant recovery machine. We're going to vacuum out some of the coolant that's here. That way I don't spill a bunch when we take that pipe off. So we're gonna vacuum the system out and then we'll refill when we're done. Let's fire this thing up. Remove, powering on. There's our business end. There's our coolant. There goes our coolant. Okay, 
Let's go ahead and disconnect that pipe and get it out of there. Right, get out of here. Okay, so up here we've got one piece of this pipe that bolts to the cylinder head. There's another piece right over here that bolts to it. We just gotta sneak those little 10 millimeter bolts out and then uh, we can pull this pipe off the heads. Come out. It's uh, kind of a tight squeeze back there. Close quarters combat. Maybe a socket will do better. That wrench body was a little bit too wide when it was hitting this little uh, alternator bracket. And this is a cool tool as well because the socket is exposed through the ratchet so you can actually put your finger on it to create some friction so that way when you go to ratchet back the fastener doesn't re-tighten as you go the opposite direction. Pretty clever. I don't know if they intended that to be a design feature but it works. good so my guy who owns this car kind of saved the day for me on this one he was in here once before and it looks like they cut out a piece of this bracket to gain some access to this and that's really cool because that makes my life a lot easier oh, come on threads they just slowed down slightly Now is the end. I'm running out of threads. There's one. And another. Oh, that's, oh, what? oh no, 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 no. It's hiding out under the power steering pump. Look, yeah, that one's back there. That could be slightly more difficult to remove. Okay. Well, let's see how this is gonna work out. I really hope I can get that off of there. Now, like I said earlier, if I have to take a, this pump off or take anything on this front cover off again, I'm going to be slightly upset because I already had this stuff off earlier. I didn't think there would be a conflict to, uh, to get this line out, but uh, there might be. We'll see. The real question is, is do I have enough space once this uh, bolt is unthreaded to get it out of this little uh, hole right here? And I'm down to, eh, it looks like about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little less. There is a relief cut in the bracket for this power steering pump. So I'm, I'm hoping that's there so I can get this fastener out. And I think, oh no way. Oh no, I don't I don't know if I can get it out guys. Hang on, I need some need some needle noses. No way, that's flipping tight. Okay. See how that's uh, like a T-junction type of fitting? Here's our repair. Some kind of tape or JB Weld or both. Yeah, we can see right here at the bottom where the coolant was still seeping its way out. And that's connected up here on top of uh, this front cover assembly. You guys can't see, what am I doing? That crossover pipe right there connects right up here to this barb. All right, pipe, you're coming with me. Okay, I have uh, recovered the new unit from the trunk. We'll just compare them real quick, see we know what we're looking for. They're the same dimensions. The new one has replacement O-rings in it. There is an absence of JB Weld. And we also get a, a, a new pipe or a new hose. So this unit is acceptable. Let's go put it in. All right, let's see how we're gonna do this. Take me go this way. Yes. Hose comes up. This guy goes in. Very tight squeeze. It's tight like a tiger. Wow. 
that's one fastener. That other one. Yeah. I don't know about that other one. So I got it out. That means I, I know it's gonna go in. I think. It really should. Laws of physics and all. Maybe if I uh, kind of change this angle a little bit. Here's what we're going to do. We'll put the bolt in the line and then feed them into that little pocket at the same time. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. That worked. Okay, I just need to wrench this down a little bit and then we'll connect the hose. Uh-huh. Getting somewhere. Yeah, see how the it won't ratchet because the fastener wants to uh, rotate? What I'm going to do is just reach in with these needle noses and push down on the fastener. And now it's ratcheting. I can hear it and feel it. Tactics. It's all about tactics. No matter what it is, tactics. Incoming click. Package. Good. And we got to do the other side over here. That's awkward. Sometimes this uh, this bolt turns very easily, and then sometimes it slows down a bit. So when it's easy, it's, you can tighten it by hand, and then when it slows down, you got to go back to little ratchet. There we go. Almost incoming clickage. Right about mm, there. Click. All right, let's get the intake prepped with new gaskets and uh, I'll blow out these intake runner holes because there's still some, some dirt in there. We'll clean the rest of that out, blow these things out, and then uh, we'll get the intake on. Here we go. Okay, let's slap this guy back on. I'm uh, waiting for my gaskets to arrive for this intake. I, I don't have them yet. I thought they were here. They're not here. Still waiting for those to get here. So uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and clean all this stuff out while we wait. For some reason, you guys hate this, what I'm about to do, and I don't understand why. I'm not going to stop doing it, and I'll show you the reasons. If you look down inside of that valve, I hope you can see. You can tell that intake valve is closed. Uh, all but two of these intakes are closed. I really see no harm in taking compressed air, starting at the bottom of the runner, and then blowing it. To remove any debris. I do this quite often and every time I do, someone yells at me about blowing uh, debris into the cylinder and that's just not the case, that's not happening here. I'm actually blowing it from the inside out to remove any debris that has entered. That way it does not go into the cylinder while the engine is running. So let's plug that back up and do the next one. And the reason that you start all the way at the bottom is because there's nowhere for the air to flow except out. So if you start at the bottom, it'll gather up all the dirt and debris and whatever's in there and then blow it outwards and not inwards. Now, if I were to come out here and blow air into it, there's a chance more debris will go down into the intake runner. But if you start at the bottom, it blows out. 
because of displacement. There we go. Four down, four to go. we wait waiting for parts all right i have received my replacement gaskets let's get this stuff changed out and uh toss this intake back on i would like to uh complete this uh this operation as soon as possible give that the old flippity flop do i have all the bolts out of this i don't want them to fall no there's one we don't want to lose these not good here you go over there These were probably reusable, but yeah. New ones. Wonderful. And they match up. Yep. Oh, they're not blue, so we don't know that they're good. It's unfortunate. And they were Felpros too. Felpro. Come on, guys. You're supposed to have blue gaskets. Because shapes and colors stimulate us. Dokes. all intake runners have new gaskets it's hard to see because they're the same color as the intake and they're not blue but uh, they're all in there let's get this guy back in goodbye intake plugs you're coming with me there no. pro tip use other people's trash cans so you don't have to empty your own I'm just kidding we value teamwork here Alright, intake. Let's do this. Oh. Obstruction located. Get out of here. Get out of here. Now, before I do anything else, I have to remember that uh, little bolt that goes in the corner of this manifold. This one, that's the one. All the way back in the corner. No alternative. All right, looking good, I think. There we go. A little, little bit at a time. Just gonna take a quick peek under to make sure that all the gaskets stayed. And they did, I can see all of them except for that one in the back, but I can feel that one. Yeah, everybody's good, okay. Thank you. Fuel lines in the way. Hmm, everything's in the way. I don't know. First day. It's that bolt. Threads, 
threads, threads, hooray. Victory is at hand. Plug some stuff in real quick. The easy to forget stuff. That one goes there. Throttle body. You go right there. Clickage. Uh, let's see, we'll get that fuel line later. is out of the way. Click. Still gotta get that one that's in the corner. That was a tough one to get out. You guys remember? Of course you do, you never looked away. Let's do that one by hand, same way it came out. Quarter turn at a time. lost it because I'm going inverse left-handed I'm actually not left-handed despite uh, what popular opinion is I'm, I'm not a lefty at all uh, fun fact true story I'm actually extremely right-hand dominant uh, so much so that I uh, well used to anyway had almost uh, like no skill with my left hand I couldn't do anything with it and uh, I realized that that I was de deficient in my left-handed uh, proficiency, so to speak. <laughs> so I, uh, I started just doing things left-handed as much as I could. And uh, I think what that did was taught my brain to uh, better utilize my left hand. Kind of like a long-term brain training exercise. And now I've been doing it so long, I actually do things left-handed first. And then if that doesn't work out, then I'll switch it out to my right hand. Because I know the right hand is still more capable than the left hand. I know that's weird, maybe. Uh, it makes sense to me, and I guess to me that's all that matters because it's it's my hand. Okay, let's tighten the rest of these down. We already did that one over there. I know that was kind of out of order, but that's the hardest one. Click. do the one that I can't reach by hand it is what it is. Let's gauge it. I'll use this one to see how tight they are. Alright, that feels okay. Click. That's accurate. I'm going to recheck the rest of them because they settle when the gaskets are compressed. Let's see that 
Oh, and that one turned again. And that one. And that one. And that one. That one's good. And that one did. Okay. All set, torquage applied, clickage achieved. Let's plug the rest of our goodies back in. Let's do this annoying PCB line that was here hanging out. And we will also reconnect it with the fuel line. Not literally, there's a clip that holds them together. All right, this guy goes on there. Little clamp goes back there. This one here. Injectors. Coils. I don't know. Map sensor. Right there. Oh yeah, We're coming together now. Let's get the brake booster hose next. That will be alarming if I forget. Huge vacuum leak. Actually, probably wouldn't even run. Okay. All right. Let's see, we got this guy that's gonna go under to the throttle body and into the purge valve. Oh, what else? What else am I neglecting? The safety clip for the fuel line. Let's put that on. Folks like to leave those off, I don't know why. Guys, I had an epic fail just now. I moved the camera over so I could uh, plug in all these injector wires and this uh, uh, O2 sensor and whatnot and the uh, ignition coils. And when I moved it, I swiped the camera and so I was just taking pictures and not recording. So uh, you guys missed the part where I plugged in all these injector wires and plugged in the uh, purge solenoid and that, but I've already gone through it. Um, Nader wires connected to the ECM. I just need to go ahead and connect uh, the power wire to the battery. And then we're good. Um, where's my nut? I thought I left it right here. Where'd it go? Oh no, it fell down, it fell down. Oh no. Oh, that could have been so bad. I'm glad I found it. If I had not found it, we'd be pulling this intake back off because it could have fallen and ended up inside of one of the intake runners. Oh, no way. That was, it could have been so much worse. That reminds me, I was, uh, I was working on a 6.7 diesel on a tow truck a few years ago and I put a set of injectors in it. Now those diesel injectors, they've got a big uh, uh, copper O-ring at the bottom that seals it to the cylinder head. And uh, when I was all done, I was counting my O-rings that were up on the dash and I was one short, I couldn't find it. And I look everywhere, I look under the truck, I look in the frame rail, can't find the thing. So I walk upstairs and I tell the boss, hey, uh, I'm, missing, I'm, I'm missing one of those uh, crush washers for the injectors. And he's like, okay, you need to order a new one? And I said, no, I can't find the old one. Uh, I'm afraid it fell into the engine. I've got to pull the intake back off. So. Long story short, intake came back off, the rocker covers came back off, and, and on the six sevens, the valve covers slash rocker covers, those are, uh, they're ported as part of the intake manifold. And what had happened was, is when I pulled the injector out, the, uh, the O-ring or the, the crush washer, copper crush washer fell off and it landed in one of the intake runners from inside. And it was like an eighth of an inch away from tipping over and falling in through a valve. And, and, Basically, I'm, I'm glad I found it, but it, it took me an extra two days because I had to just in, go back and redo everything I had already done. It was horrible, but uh, we didn't blow up an engine that day because uh, dropping a washer inside of a combustion chamber is a, uh, a nearly instantaneous way to destroy your motor. Uh, that didn't happen, but this, this is what that reminded me of just now. 
So always make sure you know where your stuff is. And I uh, demonstrated that uh, in this very instance. Don't do what I do, do what you're supposed to do. Okay, all done with the jibber jabble, ramble ramblings. Uh, let's go and start this thing up and make sure we're all good. No vacuum leaks, etc. I think we're all set here. Vacuum lines are on, PCBs on, bolts are tight. Connectors are connected and clicked. Motor mounts back in, intakes on, alternators, nading, belts on. Coolant's full. You guys didn't see that part, but I filled the coolant. Uh, and the power steering's full. Let's, uh, let us start in the engine. triple the length of this video so i'm gonna go ahead and close this one out right now uh, as always like thank you for watching my videos i hope you enjoyed this series on this particular pontiac i enjoyed working on this car this thing's actually pretty cool if you did enjoy it you know the drill let me know about that by tapping tapping that like button down below if you did enjoy it i'm really sorry i'll do better next time to do the exact same thing so again and as always thank you for watching and most importantly don't forget to have yourselves a great day see you guys later into transmission.